Well, welcome everybody uh, to the USC Viterbi School of Engineering Undergraduate Admission AMA. Ask me anything. It should be ask us anything, but I don't think AUA really works. Uh, at, there are four of us here today to help answer your questions. I am one of those people. My name is Paula Desma. I'm the Executive Director of Undergraduate Admission here at the Viterbi School of Engineering. I'll let the rest of our staff introduce themselves. Becky? Good afternoon. My name is Becky. I'm the Associate Director of Undergraduate Admission. Welcome. Hi, everyone. Happy to have you here today. My name is Stacey Badger. I'm the Assistant Director of Undergraduate Admission. Hi, everyone. Welcome. My name is Lisa, and I'm the Assistant Director of Undergraduate Admissions. All right, great. So here's how this is going to work today. We are going to have you uh, ask questions, and you're going to be able to upvote those questions. So right now at the bottom there, you can see that Q&A down at the bottom. We want you to open up that Q&A section and start typing in your questions. What we're going to do is try to get to as many of those questions as we possibly can, and we're going to answer them in this kind of public forum. What you all can do is, as you see questions come up, you can upvote those particular questions. How am I doing? I'm doing quite fine. So I'm <laughs> going to say that that's already been answered. <laughs> Here we go. And I hope you're all doing fine, too. But this question is about USC. It's about the Viterbi School of Engineering. It's about the application process. We don't have a very we don't have a presentation to give you today. We're just going to be answering your questions, and I hope that it's about those topics so it can be helpful to everybody. We'll also be able to post a recording of this up to our website as well. And so, anything that you want to know about that program, a couple of things as I let the questions go, and as you start upvoting the questions so that we can make sure that we get to the important ones, is a couple of things about our admission process that you should know right off the bat, and then that might help. Uh, gauge this thing. We're coming up on the early action deadline of November 1st. And so we're just about a week away, a little over a week away from that, or maybe exactly a week, eight days away from the early action deadline. If you'd like to be considered for merit-based scholarships, you must submit your application as an early action candidate for fall 2023 by the November 1st deadline in order to be considered for the Viterbi School of Engineering. You don't do anything different as far as applying to USC. You just apply to USC through the common application and make sure that you're listing one of the Viterbi School majors as your first choice major on the application. And how you know it's a Viterbi School major is if it has the letters VSE prepended in front of it. So VSE is uh, the thing you should find that's all of our engineering and computer science degree programs that are outlined inside of the application. Folks, is there anything else we should talk about in general about the admission process or something kind of right off the bat that we want to discuss before we dive into these questions? No? Just at this point, just the deadline. Next. Yeah, week. the deadline is the important part. All right. <laughs> so we got questions in there, and I would encourage you all to dive through those questions and upvote it because you are controlling our conversation for today, and we'll get to as many questions as we can get to as we start moving down that thing, and I'll start moderating it now. So Ting Ting is the winner of getting the very first question asked for today, and that is going to be, what is the research opportunity like between students at Viterbi with the rest of the USC students? So is anyone going to talk about research uh, for undergraduate students here in the Viterbi School? Yeah, I can start um, and answer a little bit of that. Um, so as you all probably know, USC is a large research institution. There's tons of um, research opportunities for students, um, especially within a school like the Viterbi School, but also in the natural sciences, the health sciences campus. There's just a lot of research that that's happening on campus and around campus. Um, I'm I don't know if this was intentional in this question, um, but one thing that it makes me want to address is that Viterbi students are not separate from the rest of the university. And it, it kind of that question kind of makes me think that, that that's what's yeah. being asked, like how do Viterbi students interact with the rest of USC? Um, and so I like to describe Viterbi students as USC students who just happen to study engineering. They are on the same campus. They are living all together with all the rest of the majors, um, or, you know, students of other majors. And you don't have to be an engineering student to do research in the engineering labs and you don't only have access to engineering labs if you're a student in engineering you can you can do research in any of the labs on campus so anything that you have interest in um, you can do research with professors in those labs you can be part of different design teams that work together with other majors at the university um, I know biomedical engineering students who did research on the health sciences campus at the med school and the hospital so there's lots of different ways to interact and you're not restricted to just engineering labs because you're an engineering student absolutely and I'll just add one thing is that the sheer volume of research here in the Viterbi school is incredibly large with over 213 million dollars in our annual research expenditures every single year and that cranks up to be one of the 
highest dollar amounts per tenure tenure track faculty of almost every engineering school in the world, which means your opportunities as undergraduates to get involved in that research is, is incredibly high. And so we, we hope that you want to do that. If you want to do research, there are lots of opportunities to do so, including paid opportunities that can get started as early as your first year in the school. So thank you for that question, Ting Ting. Josue is asking, what are some ways that mechanical engineering students explore their major outside of the classroom? And I'll, I'll kick this one off, Josue, because it's not necessarily different for a mechanical engineer than it is a biomedical engineer versus an aerospace engineer. And exploring their major outside the classroom can be done in a lot of different ways. But specifically as a mechanical engineering, uh, there are a lot of professional organizations and design teams that students get involved in as early as their first semester. For mechanical engineering in particular, that could be maybe getting involved in our Society of Automotive Engineers, the SC Racing Team, which designs, builds, and races a formula-style race car every single year for competition. Maybe it's the electric car competition. Maybe it's the solar car competition. Maybe it's the recumbent vehicle design team. Maybe they're getting involved in other teams that aren't necessarily just you know that, that ME thing. And also, all of these teams have majors across the board, those aren't just mechanical engineers, all those teams have computer science students and aerospace engineering students. And maybe they want to get involved in the design build fly competition for the aero design, aero design team, or maybe they want to get involved uh, in other types of organizations that that move these things forward, like the associate students of mechanical engineering. And these things exist across all the disciplines, so associate students of biomedical engineering. Uh, the American Institute of Chemical Engineers has a student chapter here. The Institute of Electrical and Electronics Engineers has a student chapter here as well. Makers is a great organization that students are designing and building things and, and kind of exploring their opportunities outside of their major. And then beyond that, learning more about your major happens, as I said, inside the classroom, but outside the classroom, it's not just restricted to student organizations and design teams. There are a lot of different seminars, different opportunities for networking with alumni. There are different events that are happening across the school uh, from semester to semester where you might be able to engage and learn a little bit more about your opportunities. Uh, so there's there's really lots of different ways that students engage in, in learning more about their major. And, and I'll also say that, that exploring things outside the classroom doesn't have to be related to your major. And, and similar to Becky's question, as an engineering student, you don't just do engineering in your entire life. And I hope that you all come to this institution that and you bring numbers of different passions and interests that I hope you'll continue and maybe you'll find new ones. You know, we have students that are really into rock climbing or maybe they're really into the outdoor activities. So they get involved in SC Outfitters, which is a fantastic organization. Or maybe you're involved in athletics and you want to get involved in kind of an intramural level athletics or club level athletics, or maybe you're super competitive and being recruited for varsity uh, level athletics. Remember the faith-based activities or things related to community service and outreach. Uh, for example, we have our K through 12 STEM center, which does a lot of great work where our undergraduates get involved in that and getting young kids in the area excited about math, science, engineering, STEM related activities, hosting our own robotics competition for these kids because maybe they don't have the opportunities to get engaged in other resource dependent uh, programs such as FIRST Robotics. We, we hold our own robotics program for them. So involvement, activities, things that you're going to do inside of your life in the engineering school, I would hope that you all think as broadly as you can that your life will be fulfilled by things that may not necessarily be engineering, but there definitely will be a lot of engineering in there as well. Uh, so now the the most upvoted questions, uh, I just realized I wasn't sorting my Q&A by must upvoted, so I was just going down the most recent, and that was my fault. So the next most upvoted question is from Isabella, and I feel like, Isabella, we, we've seen you in our program before. I think that we've talked before, so if we have, it's good to see her. Maybe we've just seen emails from Isabella. Uh, maybe that's it. The name seems super familiar, but it's good, good to have you here, Isabella. Thank you for joining us. What happens when you get, I think you mean deferred, deferred from Viterbi in the early action round? Okay, so let, let's let's talk about early action as an admission process, and let's talk about how the applications are going to be processed and moved through this system. First off, all of you have nothing to worry about. The application process from last year is fairly much the exact same thing this year, except we're using the word early action, and we've moved up the old scholarship deadline to now November 1st. And so this process is exactly the same. Those that have applied early action by November 1st will start to get reviewed and will actually have a decision. We'll actually be selecting some of those students to admit in late January around that time period. We don't have an exact time just yet, but around there'll be a small population that students will be admitted uh, from uh, as early action. From that small population of students that will be admitted, we will be choosing uh, scholarship finalists from that pool. And those scholarship finalists will then be invited to participate in a very long next step of the admission process, which involves scholarship interviews, and you'll be invited to actually do those processes, and then selection processes, and that runs all the way into March. 
of all the students that were not admitted during the early action round, defer is a weird word, but essentially that application just joins the rest of the applicant pool. And so the rest of the applicant will be coming in and will be considered for admission along with everybody else. And so everybody, when you apply by early action, what it really does is, and I, I borrowed this term from someone else, it really gives you the most bites from the apple. It means that we can consider you for merit-based scholarships in that early action admit round, but we can also then consider you for the general admit round down the road. And so all the, the late January, the people that will be admitted early action will be admitted at that point in January. Everyone else will be put into the regular uh, file review process and decision process, and all students, regardless of when they apply for admission, will receive a final admission notification by the end of March. And so that's how we're going to make that happen. Do, uh, Becky, Stacy, do we, do we handle that question well? Do you think we got that down? Yeah, I think mm -hmm. so. Yeah. Great. Adam is asking the next question. It's got the next higher votes. Uh, what kind of answers would you like to see for the Viterbi contributions question? Love this question. I love the way it's phrased. Who wants to take a shot at it first? <laughs> Stacey, you want to go? Sure. I think it's interesting for these questions too. And I think these types, of, I find engineers to be very quantitative people and reading applications is a very qualitative process. So it's a little different than I think what, what you would expect. But the answers that I'm looking for, um, I am not looking for anything specific. And I think that's what drives students crazy the most is I'm not looking, there's no magic sentence. There's no magic phrase that's going to make us go, yes, this is exactly what we're looking for. And because of this, this is student is admitted. So that's just not really how it works. So what I'm looking for is really what you would want to contribute to Viterbi, the things that you actually think you can contribute to our school at this point in time in your life, of course, your mind might change later, but with where you are in high school right now, what types of things do you want to do here? Why do you want to come to USC? Why do you, why are you interested in Viterbi? What could you actually possibly bring to our, to our student body? Um, and again, there's no magic answer to that. It's genuinely who you are and the things that you do. So that's what I'm looking for when I'm reading that answer. And, and I think this probably answers a couple of these next questions that are the highest ranked here. Um, there's, yeah, like Stacey said, there's nothing specific we're looking for. There's no magic word or contribution that we're looking for because we're not looking for one specific type of student to admit. We are looking for, and I, I know we, if you've been to any of our sessions, uh, virtual or, or in person, we're looking to bring in a well-rounded class of students. So we want students who will contribute in, you know, way A, but we also want to bring in students who will contribute in way B. <laughs> and we're looking for all different types of students and all different types of contributions to bring in this, um, you, you know, the, the best incoming class. So not just like one well-rounded student, but a well-rounded class of students that will complement each other while you're working together in teams. And so there, like, like Stacey said, there's not one thing we're looking for, but um, we're just looking just to get an idea of, of how you will be a part of our student body when you get to campus. Yeah, and, and I, I, let me give a little bit of background as to why we added this question to the application in particular. Um, the whole point of our application process, since as long as we've all been here, is for us to get to know you as best as we possibly can. And our advice across the entire application, and I'm sure this is going to hit a lot of other questions here, so bear with me, but the, the point of the application, or the, your part of the application is to write to us. You, you give a lot, there's a long essay, there's short answers, and we read everything. And for some reason, some people think we don't see everything like, oh, they're just looking at the engineering questions. No, we read the entire application. So we're trying to understand everything that we possibly can about you. And that's all of us at the university. We're reading all of this information with our goal being to try to get to know who you are and what you've done and what context you've done those things, how you've done them, why you've done them, why it's important to you. And oftentimes in this like world of college admissions, specifically this world of college admission from high school students and from parents that when you're all going through them, I hope we have some parents that are in the audience as well. It, the stress levels get super high and the idea of navigating this process starts to feel like there is a way to navigate it in better ways. And all of you as families and as parents probably start to hear rumors or like, oh, this is how you do that. This is how you do that. Or that university wants to do that. And then even this day and age, there's a lot of different services that are out there that, that that supposedly help you with this process. And I'm the first one to tell you, you don't need those services. But what you do need to do is approach this application with one word, and that is authenticity. When you read through the questions on our application, it's not looking for a particular answer. We don't want one thing, which is what both Stacy and Becky have said related to any of the questions, including that student contributions question. What we're really trying to understand is what's your take on this? What do you want? 
when it comes to that contributions questions, we did write a blog post about it. And I put it here in the chat that helps you understand what, what we're trying to understand about you. But I'll tell you real quickly, it's just you. And it's what Becky and Stacy have both said. We give you some ideas, like maybe that involves things related to your academic pursuit. Maybe that involves things related to your co-curricular environments outside of this, a thought process. But we're not we give you those ideas that built in the application, not to say you have to address all of those different elements. We're just trying to help you. We're trying to understand what would you contribute? Because as we went through this process years ago, we kept trying to find out, okay, so what would a, what, what is that student's contribution? What is their unique contribution to it? We would try to surmise this from the rest of the application. And at one point we just said, let's just ask them, what do you believe your unique contributions would be to our student body? And the point I think that people are getting really hung up on is that if you think something is unique, you're probably as an engineer eliminating it because you're probably saying, well, probably someone else can do that. Fine, but that's your unique ability to contribute. And that could be anything. So I, we just want to hear your take on it. And it's more information. And that might involve things you've already talked about in the application, but it gives us a different perspective on it that you want us to, to, to understand. But we just are trying to get to know you. That's the point of this application. We never get to talk to you in the in the in the admission process. So all of our questions are us talking to you and you telling us responses to those questions. The better you can get help us get to know you through all of the questions in the application as a whole, the better we can understand the process and your potential contributions to the community overall. So I hope Adam that that helps you. Uh, next up, Jason is asking: In an application, would you like to see a student prepared for his or her major or a multidisciplinary student? Yes. <laughs> All of the above. I think, again, we're not looking for one thing. And one of the things that ends up coming in, especially in all the events that we've been holding lately, one of the questions I get a lot of is, how do I, should I have a lot of experience in the chosen major that you're looking for? And, and more specific, Jason, uh, so if I tell you one of these answers, does that mean you're going to lie to me on the application? Because that's what I told you I'm looking for. I want you to tell me who you are. And, and, and to address this from a slightly different perspective, I get different students that get concerned with me a lot. Uh, they'll say like, you know, I'm applying as an astronautical engineer, but I'm a little concerned because I don't have any experience as an astronautical engineer. And I look at that student every time and I said, who does? Who has experience as an astronautical engineer? Who has experience as a biomedical engineer coming out of high school? You all have the same academic experience. Don't worry about that. What we're trying to understand is what is, what is your interest? If you're, if you're expressing an interest in a field, Perfect. That's all we're looking to understand. Why you have that interest. Sometimes the questions get related to that. And we want to understand that as well. But it doesn't mean that you have to be lock set on these different areas. A student can be very interested in a lot of different fields, but want to major in one thing. As a matter of fact, in college, you have to major in one thing. Our application is only allowing you to major in one thing. Down the road of the ideas of double majors or adding things on are the ideas of adding things on as an undergraduate student. You don't do that in the admission process. So really, again, what a lot of these questions are about, and they're great questions, are really, I summarize as strategy. It's like you're, you're trying to approach your strategy to the application process. And the one piece of advice I can give everyone on this call is remove the strategy. Because when you are adding in strategy of what are they looking for? Well, how can I answer this question to get, the, to, to get the good score? You know, like that type of situation. How do I get an A on this paper? What you're doing is you are, without trying, you're removing your authenticity. So tell me what's going on. Tell me what's happening. Uh, how do we make it, how, how do we how do we understand you as best we possibly can? And I'll give one, I know I'm already talking a lot, I'm sorry guys, but one, I'll give you one example that I see a lot of, uh, and, I, and I, I've seen it year after year after year. And, and this one very particular application pops up to mind that uh, there was, in that particular year or, or whatever's going on, that particular student believed that USC was looking for community service-minded students. And so the application was really interesting because you start going through it and I start, you read the, you know, if you think about it, I'm reading the activity summary and like the top, and you guys control the order which you put activities in and the top like three, four, five things were all this idea of volunteering, you know, soup kitchen here, the, yeah, yeah, whatever. And then it gets down, there's other activities that are happening. And then there's listed like, you know, baseball and football was listed as an activity, baseball, football. And then you start reading through the application. And one of the questions later on was like, what was the most important activity to you in high school? I think that was one of the questions that particular year. And the student talked about this, this soup kitchen experience and it was volunteering. And I'm like, you know, that's the, what made it. It was a beautiful, beautiful, filled with imagery, you know, writing. And I was, I was moved. I was moved by it. And then I thought about it for a second. I said, wait a minute. 
if this was the more, most important thing in their entire high school career, and it changed them, as it says, it changed them for what they were. And I went back to the activity summary, and I realized that was one weekend sophomore year where that kid spent two hours doing this and never did it again. And so I start to wonder the level of authenticity. If it was such an important activity that it did, according to your words, change your life and do such amazing things that you wanted to keep doing it, why did you ever do it again? And as you read more in this application, I come to find out that this particular student was a double varsity athlete all four years, baseball, football, multiple travel baseball teams in the off season, conditioning, multiple awards, starting pitcher, starting quarterback. This guy was a stud and he was like all all star athlete and like all these different things in his life was sports in high school. I didn't believe the application because. The most important thing to him in high school was sports. And there's nothing wrong with that. And I think that's the point here is that we're trying to understand who you are. Don't assume we're looking for somebody. And the minute you start manipulating or massaging your information or crafting a narrative that isn't yours, you diminish your authenticity. And that really challenges us to understand you. So please trust your gut, go with what you are. And back to Becky's and Stacey's original point, we're looking for lots of different types of students because when you sit down in class, you should be different than the students that are sitting next to you and you all have unique abilities to contribute in your own way. So tell us what those are. So that's a really long-winded story, but I don't think you guys want to add anything onto it, but do you want to correct anything or? <laughs> no, move on, next question. Got it, moving on and I'll stop talking. Nicholas Ferry, what do you value the most with each application? authenticity but go ahead <laughs> yes authentic authenticity um you're probably thinking about the different parts of the application and honestly no one part is more important than the other i mean obviously you're applying to an academic program so your academics are going to be the first thing we look at um and that is just to sort you know review your academics are you strong in math and science if we bring you into this program are you going to be success successful academically um you know or are you going to struggle we we don't we don't want students struggling in in the program i mean engineering's hard and there's a lot of resources to help you but we're looking at at those academics However, about 70 to 80% of our applicants meet our minimum academic requirements. Um, and so that's where we really dive into everything else that helps us make those decisions. I mean, our admit rate is 10%. So how do we get from 70 to 80% of the students meeting the minimums to the 10% that are ultimately admitted? And that's where all the rest of that information comes in and everything that Paul and Stacey and I just talked about, um, you know, about reading the, the short answer questions, understanding your contributions, you know, where, who are you? What do you want to do with your degree? All those types of things that are going to ultimately um, make the decision. Yeah, not one thing. Everything's important. Uh, Soham, what is Viterbi looking for in a computer science applicant in terms of past experiences? And what's the best way to portray this through essays? So we did just answer this question that you're not, we don't necessarily need to see experience in a particular field. You just tell us what you've done. And, and that, you know, another quick example of this is that, you know, so we have students that are super involved in band, and maybe that took up lots of opportunities to do other stuff. Tell us if you're in band, that's fine. That doesn't make you a less qualified computer science applicant. The academic preparation that Becky just talked about is really what we're trying to understand for preparation for our program, not necessarily past experiences. Johnny's asking, is it possible to submit letters of recommendation past the early action deadline? Yes, it is possible to do that. You can add things to your application all the time. However, we can't necessarily guarantee that it'll be reviewed depending on when you submit it, because maybe we would have already reviewed that application at that time. So keep in mind that the application deadline is you got to hit submit on that common app deadline. Things can come in past the deadline. But if, uh, if it's a required element, like a teacher council report, we won't be able to make an admission decision until we have all required elements of your application. Letters of recommendation beyond that, are not required and so they are supplemental and that's something that if we don't see it it doesn't matter necessarily to us but we won't necessarily be looking for it for lack of a better term arjun is asking about half my ap classes are in my senior year senior year considered significantly in the application process or just the junior and sophomore year all four years of your high school are significantly considered across the application review so we want to see that you're taking classes and every single year in high school you should be increasing rigor so you should be taking a lot of classes in senior year that are hard and that's good stuff we will be looking at your fall grades uh, for um, for the admission process. Uh, Aiden, when will we hear back for USC early action decisions? That is the end of January. And so I think that's also published on our website. Addison, good afternoon. Good afternoon to you. Uh, during the Discover USC event yesterday, I believe it was mentioned that applications cannot be processed until first semester transcripts are available. 
No, that's not what we said. Uh, once our transcripts become available in December, how do we go about uploading our final transcripts? Or is that something that is automatically uploaded by our counselors? Work with your high school counselor to understand that because I don't know what your high school counselor is doing. Applications are always processed. We can start to read something. What I said was we can't make an admission decision until we see final transcripts. So make sure that you get those, uh, those transcripts in. Uh, and so you'll work with your high school counselor, but you can always submit things to us via your portal. Once you apply, you will have an applicant portal and you can submit things up there uh, and you can submit un, uh, unofficial transcripts as quickly as you like whenever you want that to happen and that's probably a good idea because it might be faster than what a system might do from your high school counselor to the overall system uh kiva is asking as a student majoring in the school of engineering am i still able to take courses in the marshall school of business there are courses across the university that students can take regardless of the academic discipline but some courses are restricted to major only so it depends on a case-by-case -case basis um, but that's why a lot of those those classes are actually part of minor programs so if you want to engage in a minor that's a great way to do that and there are a lot of open classes across the school specifically in marshall school of business that you can take as an engineering student absolutely yp is asking can you show us some examples of supplemental essays no, we can't, um, but you should write your own. Uh, and I think that's a good thing for you to deal with. Uh, next, Aditya, in my essays, I mentioned some projects I worked on connecting it to research at Viterbi. However, I used very technical language that may seem appropriate to an engineer, but might be confusing to a lay person since the engineering school review my application too. Should I keep those technical terms or use simpler terms? Aditya, I can't tell you how to write your application. <laughs> I can tell you, you might wanna make sure that any one of us can understand that whether we have an engineering background or not, and I think that you might want to think about how you communicate as a person. Uh, keep that in mind. You are writing to other human beings. And be cautious, because I've seen this many times before, that a student tries to submit something technical, and I'm working with one of our faculty members and reviewing it, and they're like, wow, this is way wrong. And so your attempt at trying to be better might shoot yourself in the foot. And I've seen that happen more often than not. So please be cautious about these types of things. Zoom user. Um, hi, Zoom user. Good to see you. Uh, I applied for early action. My transcripts will not be available at the November 1st deadline. Will that affect my application? I've already answered this question. Um, Aiden, am I allowed to self-report my SAT, ACT scores? Or do I have to send the official scores? If you elect inside of the common application to have scores considered, they must be official scores. So you're more than welcome to submit uh, your self-report scores as part of the application. But when you tell us to consider your scores, we can't consider the application complete until official scores are received. And so make sure that you do that. Tall. Oh, by the way, I'm going to take a pause real quick. I'm trying to go fast because I, I went long in the first one. Sorry, guys. So I'm just like zipping through these. Um, but take a moment, everybody here. We have a lot of you, 228 participants here. Go back into these questions and start upvoting again because I can see our vote counts are dropping, which means that I think we've done that once. And now we've got to go back in, keep upvoting. There are new questions at the bottom. And more specifically, there's probably a lot of repeat questions. So what we want to do is make sure that we get the upvoted questions higher than those repeat questions, and then we're not wasting the time on those, okay? So go back in there and keep upvoting as much as you possibly can. Find the questions that are important to you, push it to the top, and that's how we're going to address our questions as we keep moving forward. So it looks like we're hitting that again, and I appreciate that. And we've got a little bit of a fight for top right now. And I'm going to go with this one because it just rose to the top. Natalie is asking, how does the undeclared engineering major function? Who would like to take that? Becky. <laughs> I can take it. Um, it functions as a placeholder. <laughs> it's not a major. Um, there is no four-year curriculum for undeclared engineering. It is an option on the application for students who know they want engineering or think they want engineering, but they don't know what kind of engineering or they're not confident in choosing an engineering major at the time of the application. Um, and so you can apply as an undeclared engineer and you'll be in the system as an undeclared engineer. You'll start taking classes in engineering, um, but you will eventually have to pick something something specific, aerospace, mechanical, electrical and computer, whatever it might be. Um, the academic advisors will help you figure that out by letting you, you know, by advising you to take courses in areas that you're leaning towards, see if you like it, maybe join some student organizations that revolve around those areas, see if you like that and work with you until you select a specific engineering major. So. Great, thank you very much. Uh, Seth, wow, Seth is just winning. He's fighting with himself. He's got the two top questions here, Seth. Way to go, buddy. Um, so I'm going to hit this top one for a second. Seth is asking, what is USC looking for specifically in merit scholarship candidates compared to regular USC admits? <laughs> Stacey? Well, I just feel like it's, it's similar to everything that we've talked about before, too. It's not one thing that we're looking for versus anything else. I think 
a lot of times if you put, you know, a scholarship candidate, someone that we invited for a scholarship interview versus a student who maybe got admitted for a regular decision, they're not going to look super different on paper. Um, it's sort of how they complete their application, being authentically themselves, all those types of things, sort of the depth that they have or can have um, is sort of what's going to make them stand out. Um, so kind of thinking of it in those terms, but it's not going to be there's not one thing again that we're looking for in the application um, it's sort of competitiveness in that way too maybe doing how how well you're doing within your high school curriculum and everything like that too but there's no magic piece that makes one student uh better than another um yeah. especially what we're looking at all the elements we just discussed you know there, there's so many things that make each of you who you are um and there's an academic element of it there are co-curricular or extracurricular activities that are an element of it there are individual responsibilities that you have going on relative to your own family situation there are jobs there are volunteer work there's faith-based activities there's music there's athletics there's all these things that people do and i'm not saying that you have to have all of these things but when students are doing things they start to create much more of a an idea of what's happening and and sometimes students were admitting because we we just want there's so much amazing academic stuff that's happening because that student only focus on academics and that's that's a student we would admit and then there's this other ones like that quote unquote well-roundedness right they do everything well, that's a student that will admit and then there's this other one that did this one thing and well that's who admit. again we're trying to pull them all together to create a really comprehensive and diverse and coming group of students when we look at scholarship students it, it they just do those things and more and they they have this this kind of just outstanding story background and what we can perceive as a stronger ability to contribute in whatever way that might be and so it really comes down to how you present yourself as stacy mentioned and and I'll, I'll really say this there are a lot of applications that you may be a great and seller student you may do amazing things but if you don't do well in presenting that information to us in the application we don't know it and so oftentimes students will tell me like i do x y and z and then i will look at their application i'm like you didn't even tell us that you didn't even put it in the application or you didn't explain it well, or it wasn't written well. Like these are all things that we're trying to understand about you. So it's not, it's not one thing. Seth is asking, will a majority of students be admitted EA? No, majority of students will not be admitted EA. It's just a small percentage of students. We don't have an exact number, but it, again, you're not changing your chances of admission because you apply via EA or regular admission. You have the same chances of admission in either pool, but you want to get your application in by early action deadline because that's how we're going to be able to consider you for merit-based scholarships. If we don't see that application in there, we're only going to be looking at those students that apply it under that particular model. Um, Tal is back. I think we already had one question from, from Tal. How does admission reading work for Viterbi? Is it separate from normal admissions? Are there specific regional admission officers for Viterbi? Becky, do you want to take a shot at this? Sure. So there are not specific regional admission officers. This is us. <laughs> and Angie. <laughs> four and of Angie's us. not here. Angie's not here. Yes. Angie's not here. She's on vacation. Um, so, so this is it. So there's five Viterbi admission counselors, we are the five who read the Viterbi applications. Um, because there's only five of us, we don't divide up regions like the, like the central admission office does, um, but we work very closely with them. So we might read a file before a central admission reads a file. Um, your territory managers who you may know, you may have met at your high school or at, at events in your area or on campus, um, they will work with all of the applications from your school. They make sure that your application application is complete. If we're missing anything, they will reach out to you. Um, and they are reviewing for sort of admission to USC. Then any student who puts a Viterbi major as their first choice major, we will review for direct admission to the School of Engineering. We work very closely with them. We have input on every single Viterbi application. So it's not a two-step process, like at some schools where they send us some of the Viterbi applications. No, we have input in every single one of them. Um, yeah. And then we work really closely with that staff over in the central admission office. Yeah, I think that's the key distinction is that there isn't a clear flow chart of processes where things get filtered out and pushed to different areas. It's very fluid. It's very dynamic. And we can jump in at any single point. And we work very closely with all of the dozens of people in the Office of Admission, work very, very closely with them in talking about files and reading through files and, and, and our ability to contribute and, and understand what's happening. But to be clear, the engineering school does not make a single admission decision. We don't make any admission decisions at all. We are contributing our input to the review application review process and the office of admission is making every single admission decision that's going on so just to, to be incredibly clear about that i want to make sure you all understand that now 
sometimes people are wondering that question. I'm not saying that was your question, but it's like, okay, so who do I need to influence? Um, and there's no way to do that. Cause again, we're all kind of in the mix there and making sure that's happening, but we are the one guiding that process for all the Turby school admits as we're going through our program. Um, Alyssa is asking if my school works on a semester based system, do I need to submit my unfinalized grades for EA if whatever grades you have I'm assuming this might be a when you say unfinalized grades. Alyssa I'm not certain if you're if you're an international student and talking about predicted grades um, submit whatever grades you have that's great. Um, and that's always helpful to us, but again, we will need official grades for the semester when they are available, we cannot consider partial grades uh, in, in this process, but but that is important for us. And for any predicted grades, if you're on the IB curriculum internationally, please submit whatever you have there. That's usually something that's very important to us, especially from an international perspective and international students. Tanya, what tips do you have for the contribution supplementary, which we've already answered, so I'm assuming that that was addressed, and for the short questions, which include dream job, dream trip, favorite book, what do admission officers look for in these supplementary? So we already addressed the supplementary question already, and I already gave you that link, so I hope you see that. But there is a very secret way to answer dream job, dream trip, favorite book, favorite snack. We're going to tell you exactly what that is because it's the only way to be admitted. So you all better get your pencils and your pens out right now. Um, put your dream job, your favorite snack, <laughs> your, your favorite book, whatever it might be. It, we, we are laughing because we get this question all the time. Like, what should I put down for my favorite food? well, what's your favorite food, then that's what you should put down. Um, sometimes, uh, I don't know. I mean, we get my dream job as an admission counselor. We're like, no, it's not. Don't do that. It's not. I mean, my my dream job is not an admission counselor. It's an ice cream <laughs> taster for Ben and Jerry's. That's my dream job. Um, so just you say taster down. for Ben and Jerry's? Yes. Yeah, that's, that's, like a a that's a good one. That's a good one. And I don't live in Vermont. Um, so put down your dream job. These are fun for us because these are the questions that really tell us who you are. I mean, your essays and your short answer questions, they're reviewed by your English teacher and your counselor and your parents and your you know older sister who's still in, already in college. Um, where these little quick takes of what's your favorite book? What's your favorite, you know, what's your theme song? Um, it really lets us get to know you. So just what is your favorite snack? Put your favorite snack. The, yeah. Don't overthink this. We're not looking for anything. And also don't try to find the thing that we're looking for because it would be weird. Like, just tell us what's going on. Like, have fun with these. These are an opportunity for you to inject some personality into the conversation. Um, they're fun. Have fun with it, okay? Um, Aiden, for uh, class 23, Aiden Phillips, uh, for the prompt regarding the grand challenges, should the challenge you choose to write about be one that directly corresponds with your intended discipline of engineering? That's a great question. Refer back to the link that I put inside the chat. But the quick answer is no, don't do that. Uh, we often get some questions where that are like, but I can't find the one that directly relates to my major. I'm like, no, but the question doesn't ask you that. Very clearly says, which of these is the most important to you and why? Which of those is the most important to you and why? So when you look at those lists of the 14 grand challenges, we're asking you to do that homework because this is an important element of our undergraduate education. It's a theme of our education to be solving real world problems that are existing right now. So when you look at that list of problems, what speaks to you? What's something that you think is important? Tell us why that is. That's all we understand. We're also not looking for you to address and figure out a solution for it in the however the 250 word limit that it is. So just tell us what, why it's important to you. And that that's that's totally fine. Okay. Uh, one more reminder to get back in there and upvote questions, get things pushed up to the top from the bottom if you think it's important. So get down in there and start up, upvoting questions again, because I know that I need reminders to do that myself. Tall is back. Tall is just winning with the questions, Tall. Way to go, Tall. Uh, what is your favorite USC tradition? Peoples, I'll let you go. And oh, as a quick note, Lisa's been very quiet, but let's let's address why Lisa's <laughs> been very quiet. Lisa was, we just hired Lisa. This is day five. This is your fifth day of work, right? Yep. That's right. So, congratulations. We just made her the Zoom background two minutes before we were up and running. By the way, that's why we started late because I forgot to do it. And so we were doing it real quickly. So that's, that's how new she is. So she's going to jump in. But Lisa, I'm going to make you answer this question. What is one of your favorite USC traditions that you may know about because you've been around the university for a little while? Okay, one of my favorite ones would probably be if you go to a USC football game. I actually learned this maybe like two weeks ago when I went to the game with my dad. Um, when you're walking out near exposition, you actually kick the pole that's there. 
And it's something that was, it's a tradition from band. I guess uh, the trumpet and uh, drummers would kick it so that they know and they're warning the people behind them, like this pole's coming up in case you can't see it so you don't trip on it. But now everyone just goes and they kick the hell out of this pole. <laughs> and it's really fun. And I, I loved it. It was it was a great time. That pole, by the way, is the, the flag poles on Truesdale Parkway as you exit campus to the south when you're walking to the Coliseum for a football game. It is a fun tradition that my Twitter feed had a video that the band just posted. I been around this campus for nearly 30 years, never knew it started from the band. I just thought it was something people did. And then when I read the story, I was like, oh, it's for kicking because the, then the drums couldn't see it. I'm like, oh, it makes total sense. I'm like, oh, that's crazy. Becky, Stacy, other thoughts? Well, so I'm a, that that's usually my go-to, Lisa, because Lisa and I did not attend USC. We were not students at USC. How so. dare you? I know. We we still work here. They, they forgave us for it. Uh, <laughs> So I was not a student there. So I am unfamiliar with a lot of the student traditions beyond just that <laughs> and a few other things like events that happen. Um, but yeah, that was one thing I learned kind of right when I started working was the, the pole kicking, which um, I know that there used to be a fountain run graduation week week, which got canceled. <laughs> um, but, about my senior year, unfortunately. Uh, so, so, but but yeah, I Paul and Stacy probably know more traditions just because of the time on campus. Yeah, I would say my favorite tradition from when I was a student. I graduated years ago now. I know I look really young, but I'm I'm older than I look. I promise. Um, but my favorite tradition every year for me was something called conquest at USC. So it's sort of like a right before we play our rival football game. Uh, with UCLA, we have a big, almost like carnival on campus. There's a big Ferris wheel. There's a concert that happens to kind of get like a pep rally going to get everyone excited. There's a big bonfire where we burn a big cardboard bear um, as well. Um, and everyone just gets always uh, really excited. It's always around um, close to around Thanksgiving break and stuff like that too. So it's nice and chilly outside and we have this big bonfire um, and everyone just gets really ready for the for the football game that's that's coming up. Um, and that's always really fun. It's my favorite. Some of my favorite traditions aren't related to athletics. Uh, they they are related to the kind of the community building that goes on on campus, because especially as we get to the ideas of welcome week, when students are all moving in, there are a lot of really cool events that happen that help bring people together. And I think that's one of my favorite parts about this is that people arrive on campus not knowing anybody. And over the first week, they meet hundreds of people across all these different activities. And a lot of the activities where what I'm really getting to is the exploring of Los Angeles. There's lots of different shuttles to different and activities are going around. Students go to the Hollywood Bowl and they were able to go to productions in that first week. Our Visions and Voices program brings performances onto campus, but also brings opportunities for students to go to performances across campus, whether that's at the Walt Disney Concert Hall or the Mark Taper Forum or the Amundsen Theater. All of these different things are available to students when they get here. So the opportunities to be a USC student, to be brand new, and to have things that you start to immerse yourself inside of Los Angeles as a city, because it's it's one of the coolest, most unique cities that's out there. And it is really rare. And 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 engage in that student community around that where you, you kick off kind of that pride of being a USC student. But part of the that is being a, a citizen of Los Angeles and engaging in all these elements is important. And then the last thing I'll bring up is it's it's almost just kind of a, a normal thing for everybody. So people don't think of it as tradition, but I do, because students talk about it every day, every Wednesday is a farmer's market. And the farmer's market is where students, staff, faculty around, they go to the farmer's markets in the McCarthy Quad, and people love going to get the Thai food there. They get some fresh berries. They get their hummus and their fresh pita, the salsa, I think is Becky's we're going to go to. Best, best salsa I've ever had in my life. And I grew up in It's from the farmer's best market. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, I knew where you're going. And so that's what I think is that people kind of skip over that because it's so built in, but that is something that is unique and I think a lot of fun. So I'm going to throw that in there. I will say too, yeah, students did used to say uh, to each other, they would come into their office and say, are you going to Pad Thai Wednesday, Pad Thai Wednesday? That was like their their thing. Uh, but I just realized another tradition that I just wasn't there for, but I hear students talk about it all the time. First week of classes, taking the Metro all the way down to the Santa Monica yeah. um, here. And that's something that they do too. So that's really fun in that first week of getting to know LA and exploring LA since the Metro now goes all the way to Santa Monica, uh, which yeah. is really cool. Very cool. 
Um, Williams asked the next question, which is what, how does the admission process work for first and second choice majors? If you don't get accepted to your first choice, are you still competitive for your second choice? So as a heads up, as a reminder, if you want to be considered for the Viterbi school, we only consider applicants that have listed the Viterbi school major as their first choice major on the application. If you want to be considered for a second choice major, that second choice major should be something outside of the Viterbi school. So maybe a Dornsife major or another program, or you can leave it blank. When you leave it blank, you can be considered as open or undecided for the university as a whole. That's how that would work. If we realize that we can't admit for the engineering school, for lack of a better term, we kind of give figuratively, we give the application back to USC and say, sorry, but maybe you can consider for second choice and they will consider for second choice admission. But again, we cannot consider anybody that put list for Turby as a second choice major. So make sure that we don't do that. Uh, Aisha, what is the computer science major acceptance rate? So as a, oh, it just got leapfrogged. I'll answer it anyways. Um, but the, we don't have individual admit rates for each major. It, it's the, the admit rate for across the school is right around 10%, a little under 10%. We expect it to be that same for this coming year as well. And that's the other thing you should recognize that admit rates change by year based on applicant pools that are coming in, but don't change necessarily as we don't have any impacted programs. So that question usually is related to the fact that a lot of engineering schools, specifically public institutions, are going going to list different admit rates for different programs because they have a set number of seats. We do not have a set number of seats. We can adjust the number of seats based on interest that's coming in from the applicant pool and also be evaluating opportunities in the market for job placement down the other side of this. So we adjust as we go. It's not necessarily more difficult or easier to be admitted to one program versus another. Make sure you're listening down what it is that you want to study and don't worry about it too much. Um, cool. what is the housing situation in USC like? people live in housing. Uh, for a first year student, what is the usual room and how many people share a dorm? Real quickly, dormitory style, uh, suite style, and apartment style. Those are the three different options. First year students have the opportunity to live in all of these. What's really interesting about this is that people always like to talk about what the best one is. I'll tell you right now, there is no such thing. There's a, They are all essentially the same with the same essential amenities. They are located across campus in various spots, but none of them are closer or farther from wherever you're going to go to class or wherever you're going to eat. There's dining associated with each one of these individual elements. Um, but you take a look at housing.usc.edu to see the types of first year available students that are out there. And uh, you can be in a single if you want to, but you pay more. Most students are in double occupancy and there are some that are triples, but they are larger. So it's not necessarily like we're squeezing people in like some other schools across this area. Uh, so make sure that you're understanding that it is a, there are lots of options that are available to you. Nothing is necessarily better than something else. Uh, and there's some really good opportunities for you to, to engage in, and get to know people across that. And also the thing you should know is that we don't house by major, which I think is a big bonus for engineering students. Uh, you're going to take classes with engineers all day. Why live with them too? So the opportunity is to engage across this campus and have that music student roommate or that business student roommate or that best friend that's in cinema down the hall. These things happen and those types of engagements happen across the board as well. Quick addition to that, anytime you talk to a student who lived on campus and you say, what's the best dorm, they will always say the dorm that they lived in is the best. True. So wherever you live will be the best. Um, and go ahead, I would say, definitely look on that housing website, see where you actually want to live, because otherwise they will just tell you where they lived. True. Uh, Jonathan's asking, are there any study abroad programs specifically for the engineering school? And yes, there are. But what you should know is that as an engineering student, all of the opportunities at the university are available to you, which is unique because a lot of engineering schools don't do that. And so in addition to all the university wide programs, we have specific for school programs. We have opportunities to take courses that uh, basically extend your semester into the month of May. So you take a class throughout the spring semester, then you travel in the month of May. We reverse that and call it a fall lead program where you actually travel in August and then, then you take that same class throughout the spring semester. We have our iPodio program, which is a remote immersion opportunity for the global classroom. We have uh, semester exchange programs. And I was just in a meeting today where we were just signing some new contracts with Aachen University for full semester programs, summer research exchange programs, uh, in addition to University of Edinburgh and uh, some really cool new programs that are going to be discipline specific. We're starting to build out courses that are specific to a discipline that will give more opportunities to engage in an overseas program because you wouldn't have to do anything extra on top of that. So main answer here is lots of opportunities. We want you to study abroad. We want you to have the opportunities to do so because we think that's a critical part of your engineering education. Caitlin, well, it was nice meeting you too, Caitlin. And uh, could first and second choice majors be engineering majors? It doesn't do it. It's not a good idea. It doesn't tell us anything. It doesn't do anything to your application other than repeat your application. So you can, but you shouldn't uh, is my best advice to that. Uh, Karimar, uh, what is the application review process like? I really feel like we've answered this question. Yeah. Yes. Okay. If you missed it, please watch the recording. 
Um, Maddie, how important are higher math classes on your transcript? Does it matter what level of calculus I'm taking? We need to see calculus exposure. We need to see success in calculus. It does not matter what level you're taking, but we do want to see you excelling in rigor each year. And so if you every school is different. And so what we want to see is, are you taking the level of rigor that's appropriate to you at your school? In other words, if you're in a low level of calculus, but other students are at your school at a higher level of calculus that are also applying with you, well, then we're reevaluating you in the context of your school. Pre-calculus is not calculus. As long as we have some sort of success in calculus, then we can consider you. But one level is not necessarily better than another, unless there is like a tier of rigor available to you at your school that you're not in. So we do want to understand that you're taking highest level of rigor available to you and that you're successful in that. Uh, how can one get involved in robotics at Viterbi? Well, one, you can study computer science, mechanical engineering, electrical engineering, and there are courses that you can take in robotics. You can get involved in robotic student organizations and design teams, or you can also get involved in research in robotics. We have one of the largest robotics research centers in the Center for Robotics and Embedded Systems in the engineering school. It's one of the largest research centers related to that in the nation. So all of those ways is a way you can do that. How difficult is it to request a double major or minor from another school? Becky, Stacy. Um, so it's not difficult to request a double major. <laughs> yeah, you can always sign up. <laughs> you, can always, you can always ask to. Um, yes, students can double major. You can double major in things outside of engineering. You can add minors outside of engineering. You absolutely can do that. Now, depending on what you want your second major to be and that school's policies and processes, um, you just need to, to work with them to do that, um, you know, in CAC if you are able to add that. For example, you want a double major in music, you need to audition and you need to work with the music school. So there may be some of those types of, of policies that you need to work with that school specifically. Um, but you are allowed to just in general, you are allowed to double major, you are allowed to add minors. Um, just keep in mind that um, sometimes when students say difficult, they mean, can I double major and triple minor and still graduate in four years? No, <laughs> there's just not enough time in the day. You'll never be able to get all those classes in because you want to take all these courses. You can double major and triple minor. It just might take you longer to graduate because you're adding courses to your required curriculums to get all those degrees that you that you want to complete. Um, but you're, you know, if you want to double major, if you want to add some minors outside the School of Engineering, your academic advisors will help you figure that out and how this is going to work into your curriculum that you have required for your first engineering degree. How long will it take you to do that? Now, some students are able to add minors and graduate in four years. Some students are able to add a second major and graduate in four years. It really just depends on what your first major is, what your second major is, um, how many AP courses or IP courses you're bringing in for credit. So there's a lot of um, sort of variables in there, but your academic advisor will help you kind of work through that so that you know exactly how long it's going to take to do all the things that you want to do. Great. Uh, Rhea or Raya might be Rhea are the uh, first year classes mainly taught by professors or teaching assistant all classes in the engineering school are taught by faculty professors, you will never be taught by teaching assistants, of course, TAs and graduate students might be involved in leading labs or discussion sections, but all classes taught by professors, including the very first ones you'll be taking in your first year. Bethany, how difficult is the request? We did that one, sorry. Ting Ting, you're welcome. Uh, and I know you've achieved a one-to-one -one female to male student ratio in our income class. Yes, I was wondering about the ratio in specific majors. Uh, the, the majors vary slightly here or there, but all of them are above, I think the lowest is 42%, if I remember correctly. Um, but I don't have those off the top of my head. We don't necessarily track them individually like that, um, but they're all pretty much there. Uh, like I said, I remember the lowest being 42, and I don't remember the exact major, but how we continue to support females in engineering, same way we support all of our students is make sure we're providing those resources and support to be successful. And our women in engineering have a lot of really great community building that they do. And we'll also love that's women in engineering, which involves faculty and students and research opportunities. Our society of women engineers, student organizations that does a lot of great work. And our women in engineering program overall, not to mention just the faculty stuff, there's some really cool programming that exists for our students to make sure the students are helping to build community and find identity and be able to be successful in that. Zane, how difficult is to change your major when it comes to changing from something like computer science and engineering to just computer science? Uh, it's really challenging, Zane. Get out a piece of paper. Ready? The answer is you just tell us, and then we switch you. It's really just that. Nothing else you need to do. Um, Ashwin, in USC question number two that asks for distinct contributions to USC. Is this a USC question or our supplemental question that he's asking about? That's our supplemental. That's our supplemental? No, it doesn't have to be engineering. Either way. No, nothing has to be engineering specific in the entire application. We want to know who you are. And again, like if again, you're trying to find ways to be engineering, 
you're losing your authentic voice. We want to find out who you are. So you tell us what's going on. Um, Kayla, what is the order that you review the application in? Me, left to right, usually is how I do it. Uh, and in which essays are read first? It, there isn't a way. I mean, we all go different directions. I sometimes read applications at different points because of how the application is presenting itself. I may jump around at different times, um, but I, I, I have a very specific way that I go through most of mine, but that doesn't mean everyone else does. I mean, I don't know what you guys. Sometimes I got to change it up because I'm reading a lot of the same thing over and over again. So I go, I'm going to start here for this next one or something like that, or something makes me go, let me look at this letter of recommendation really fast, or let me look at this class list really fast. So sometimes something will get me to look somewhere else. Yeah. Always the same. I'm yeah, it's a, I it's a to, to read in order of just how it is, like essay, then short answers and whatever. But yeah, if something jumps out at me, then I might like jump over to the letter of rec to confirm or verify, you know, something, or I might jump over here. So it, yeah, it varies. Yeah, what everyone should understand is that it's a digital process and it's a digital interface where we can quite literally click around it like a website um, and we jump around at various points. And again, it's how the application presents itself and unfolds to us. Um, yeah, we all would go in a million different directions um, in a lot of what reasons. So um, how much does USC value standardized test scores like AP, SAT, ACT? AP tests are very different. SAT, ACT scores, we are test optional. APs have validated equivalents in college level coursework. So we view those very differently. We wanna see if you have AP scores, we wanna see those. But SAT, ACT were test optional. Translation, I don't care about SAT or ACTs. Do care about AP scores. If you have AP scores, please send them in so that we can see them. Um, it's always curious to me when students get straight A's in coursework and then they took all the AP exams but didn't tell us what the scores were. I kind of wonder why they didn't do that. Um, so what we want to be able to see is that if you have scores, tell us. If you weren't able to take the test for any particular reason, please tell us that as well, because you don't want us to assume anything poorly about you, but we do want to be able to see that. Uh, let's crank through like two or three more as quickly as we can, because I started late, so I apologize. We'll keep going. Um, Maya is asking, do you offer any scholarships for international students, not only full tuition, because I read on your site that you do not give it, but what about part tuition? What about the financial recognition? I said I won't be able to cover my tuition. I'm like, okay. International students are eligible for merit-based scholarships. Absolutely. Just like any other student, there's no distinction of whether it's for domestic or international. There's no such thing as need-based financial aid for international students. International students, the only ones we can admit, must be able to prove their ability to pay for the tuition. That is a U.S. law. That is not a USC thing. This is a federal law. You have to be able to prove that with your financial documentation. So you have to do that. You have to find some sort of support for that particular area, but there are scholarships available um, and, and those are merit-based scholarships and those are for all students. Uh, Bernadine, oh, oh, just got jumped. Will, uh, the second question asked about personal country and yeah, we've already answered this question. I'm reading as quickly as I can. You're, you're overthinking, Will, and you're also reading two different questions. One question is about the grand challenges and one is about your personal contributions. Two distinct questions. You're conflating them and you're confusing yourself. Go back, take a deep breath, read one question, answer it. Then go back, read the second question, answer it. Go to my chat and then put the link on our website, Viterbi Mission, about how to address these. You should be fine. Bernadine, how many letters of recommendation are required or optional? Is it one teacher, one counselor? The only thing that's required is the, quote, teacher counselor report, which can be a teacher or a counselor at your school. That's the only thing that's required. Anything additional beyond that is, is extra, and we don't, we're don't we not asking for anything else beyond that. Uh, Tyler, should both first and second choice major be in Viterbi? We've already answered this question. Uh, if there are two majors in the Viterbi school, one or similar, should we list? Oh, my God, we've answered this question. Uh, does USC help students get internships with nearby companies? Yeah, and also companies that are far away. Because all of the companies, usually that are recruiting engineers, are worldwide leaders there, and they are all over the place, and they come to USC to recruit students. There's this weird thing that you you think you're going to go to a school in a place that you're going to work, and that's not true. This is a global economy, and the types of companies that are hiring engineers, that are recruiting engineers from USC, are from all over the place. When Google is recruiting students, yeah, they may work in an LA office, but actually, where's Googly most Googly? Where's Google mostly located at? Most well, located in the Bay Area. If, if Microsoft recruits you, you're probably going to go work in Redmond, Washington for your internship or your full time job. If Intel recruits you, well, it depends on where you're working. Are you going to be in Scottsdale, Arizona? Are you going to be in Portland, Oregon? Are you going to be in Jakarta? If uh, uh, Boeing recruits you to work, are you going to work here in LA at their their their, their place here in LA, or are you going to be up in Tacoma, Washington, or are you going to be in Huntsville, Alabama? 
If NASA is going to work for you, it depends on what center you're going to work for. Are you going to work at the Johnson Space Center? Are you going to work at NASA JPL? Are you going to work at one of the other centers that's out there? Maybe the one in Northern California, I'm blanking on the name right now. All of these places that people that go for internships and full-time positions, these are all over the board. And so it's not necessarily a regional option or nearby opportunities. And the, that's where you really get involved in. And if you want to do a startup in the Turby Lab, I don't know what that is. I think you mean something else. Um, you can get involved in things as early as you want to get involved in. Are students has by majors? No. Uh, is the looking for students that have a lot of prior experience? No. Uh, is there a way to submit SAT score updates if they come in after the ed deadline? Yes, you can, but again, only if you're choosing to do that and whether we'll be, be able to consider them if we've already reviewed your application, I can't guarantee. Um, an undeclared option, what's the downside of applying? There is no downside to applying undeclared engineering. It's just like any other engineering major. There's no ups or downs, no positives, whatever. It's just an opportunity to tell you if you're not ready to say that what you want to do or you're not there yet, go ahead and put that down in your application. What do you guys look for in the diversity essay? I don't know what the diversity essay is. Does anyone know what the diversity essay is? Nope. Not sure we have a diversity essay or maybe you're reading too much into it. Uh, if you're applying a CS student, are you obligated to take engineering courses or can you take just your major? Computer science students are engineering classes, and maybe we need to rethink that for a quick second, uh, Sabrina. Um, but look at the curriculum. If you're confused about what classes you take, go to Viterbi Admission and click on the academic section. Click on the CS area, and you can see the specific classes that are required for your particular major. Um, and so I'm not exactly certain what you're what you're thinking about, but you will take computer science classes as your degree program. Um, Surely I read somewhere. I love that. I read somewhere uh, that Viterbi majors are first choice only on the common app. Yep. I've said that if we put a Viterbi major as our first choice major, is it worth or helpful? Nope, it's not. We've said that as well. Um, go ahead. Can we answer Noah's question? <laughs> What's that? I said, I would like to answer no. I would just answer God, Noah. Noah, would you rather read a response with humor <laughs> uh, or a response that is still authentic and truthful? Don't know if those are different things, but it's written in a way that also reflects the absolute ability to be effective. Okay, okay Noah's overthinking this like crazy. Go for it, Becky. It is, but I do want to give some advice. Um, humor is great. I, I mean, I hope you get from from listening to us today. We like to laugh. We We're are very serious people. We <laughs> don't appreciate jokes. Um, we do appreciate jokes. We love humor. Um, however, when you're writing humor or when you're trying to be creative or you're trying to have some, you know, like I'm a creative writer person, make sure it you can pull it off well, right? Because sometimes- and Most you, of you can't. You can type a joke and the, you because it's not face-to-face, -face, we can't read the tone. We don't really know what's going on. So just be very careful. Yes, we love funny jokes. We love funny stories. We love to laugh. However, make sure it is coming across the way you want it to, and it's not falling flat because we, we can't hear your tone or see your face as you're telling the joke or, you know, something like that. So just be cautious. Um, if you can pull it off, great. But if not, don't feel like you need to be super creative. Or Let me clarify, <laughs> Let me clarify pulling it off. Um, <laughs> put it this way. We don't know you. We've never met you. Even if you may have met us once or twice, we, we've never, we don't know you. We really don't. And if, if you've been writing these things in somewhat of a bubble of people who know you really well, AKA like parents are reading this, like, oh, Noah, this is hilarious. They probably think they love you. They love you a lot. Right. <laughs> and, and if you're, if they're reviewing it like that, then they kind of get the background and the idea of what you're going for, but there's a context to that that we don't have. And so the best advice I can give you is, hand that to someone that doesn't know you very well and ask not from a strategic standpoint of what admission thinks is like, what do you think about this? And, and what's their response to it? And that could be like a friend of one of your parents that doesn't know you very well. Cause that's a pretty much equivalent to who we are is that we're going through a lot of different things. And more often than not, when students try something, it doesn't come across in the intended way. Uh, oftentimes it comes across as worrisome. <laughs> And, and this this is a professional application. Like yeah. you, you, you want to come across as as a professional, um, you know. So just just be careful. Well, make sure it's well written. I think is the the yeah. way you want to come across is that it's well written that we understand it. And I think that's the point is that sometimes humor can be really easily misunderstood from your intent. And I don't think you want to go us down that path. So on that, we're going to call it. I will tell you answers to all of these things are on our website uh, and in our info session. There's a recording of our info session that you can go through and watch. 
all of it's there. Uh, most of the things that I really want you to really pay attention to are the fact that a lot of these things that we're worried about are strategy related. And if you think that you're implying strategy, I want you to move yourself away from it and focus on your authentic voice. Help us understand who you are. Clearly write through your different elements and make sure that the Viterbi School of Engineering is listed as your first choice major. Nothing you're going to do is going to drastically like torpedo your application unless it's like a really bad joke. But other than that, okay, <laughs> we were trying to get to know you. We also understand you're 17. You're navigating a process that feels out of your depth the entire time you're doing it. Everyone is giving you advice and it all kind of weirdly contradicts. So what I want you all to do is think about this is that we are human beings on our end of this process. We care deeply about this process and we care deeply about the work and effort that you all put inside of this. When you go through your application, take great care. We will take great care with reading it, with understanding it, and making our best decisions possible, but nothing is going to make us like you more. This game, this, this, this process A is not a game. It's, this process is about a system of which we're trying to understand how to build a student body, not decide who we think deserves it more or who we think we like more. It's the idea about building out a student body that can do the type of work we can. And at the end of the day, with an emit rate of 10%, that doesn't mean it's a distinct 10% of the population. It means that probably in that 90% that we're not able to admit as a university, there are still chunks of other 10%, probably three, four, five other times over that are equally prepared and can do an equally good job. And so we are a small institution. It's a process that is highly selective. We don't like saying no to people, but we need to in order to maintain our classroom sizes and the overall facilities and resources that we have at the school. So do your best, make sure it's well-written, get your application in by the deadline. Do not miss that deadline. We will take great care. And we are really appreciative of you taking time of joining us this evening. If you missed any part of this, check out our website. We'll have it up on our website. We'll check out our website. We'll have it up tomorrow. It will be on our YouTube page, probably later tonight, uh, if I can get away from making dinner. So other than that, Thank you all. I appreciate it. Have a great rest of, of your week. Fight on. We look forward to getting your applications next week.